Hi, this is Steve, V6WZ. Let's talk about using an electric frying pan or a skillet to reflow solder paste for building SMD circuit boards. Let's use one of these that you can buy online for about $65. Hey, those chicken legs look pretty good, but you'll see this pan cooks great circuit boards too. There's even cheaper units uh, out there uh, online or at the box stores, but this one proves to have sufficient heat to get the job done. I use this stuff quick chip cells that uh, is a low temperature solder paste. This is the recommended reflow profile and you can see that we only need to get to 165 degrees C or 329 degrees Fahrenheit. The pan can easily achieve that. One issue with this method is the uneven heat distribution on the pan because of the geometry of this electric element. Here I'm using my thermal imaging camera to look at the heat distribution and the heat time profile. The video is sped up a lot. The hot outer ring from the element is pretty obvious. The heat delta from the outer ring to the center is about 30 to 40 degrees C, perhaps not optimal. The heat time curve is a bit faster than the recommended uh, chip quick profile, but in this test I set the pan to the maximum temperature. I dug my thermal imaging gun out of the toolbox that I bought at the home building store. That worked too to give us a rough idea of the temperature across the pan. You can use that too if you want to in investigate things if you don't have a camera. Online there is some discussion about putting sand into the pan to even out this heat distribution. So I dumped some sand into the pan and did the same test. Well, you can see that this didn't eliminate the problem, but the heat delta from the edge to the center now is down to about 10 to 20 degrees C, which is better. The problem I had is when I tried to do a reflow by putting my board on top of the sand, I couldn't quite get to the required peak reflow temperature to uh, effectively reflow the solder. Perhaps too much insulation from the sand, I presume. Next, I dug out my thermocouple and I plugged it into the fluke meter. I used foil tape to stick the tip of the thermocouple onto a solder pad. I just put the board uh, directly on the pan. My objective here was to see if I could get the desired chip quick uh, profile. I started the pan at 90 degrees C, and then after two minutes, when it hit 90, I uh, turned it up to 330 degrees C. I waited until it hit uh, 130, and then turned it up to um, the a final reflow temperature of uh, 164 C. That happened at about three minutes. The profile I'll show in a minute, and it matches pretty well to the actual uh, required chip quick uh, profile. At four and a half minutes, I had reached the complete uh, reflow temperature, and I turned the pan off. Here's what I recorded on the pan. It's surprisingly close to the chip quick profile. 90 degrees C was reached at 120 seconds instead of 90 recommended. It reached 130 C, uh, degrees C right on at 180 seconds and reached the peak reflow temperature at 100, uh, 270 seconds, uh, just a little bit uh, longer than recommended. However, this is most certainly just a function of where the board was on the pan. Most certainly other parts of the board are, are likely hotter or colder and will show a completely different profile. After all this, I decided to just drop the boards directly onto the pan and use my thermocouple to increment the temperature as I just showed. Uh, my conclusion is that those temperature variations aren't likely to cause any serious problems. Everyone will have their own method for applying solder paste. I'll sometimes use the needle directly to apply it to the larger pads. The small pads, I'll often use a uh, toothpick and um, dab it onto the small pins. I'll either place the components by hand or using a pair of tweezers, uh, pop them on. Try and get them as uh, straight as possible. As you'll see, the reflow process will really move them into position. Here's a close-up of the reflow in action. It's always fun to watch these. You know, this uh, low temperature uh, solder paste really seems to flow out like water, perhaps more than higher temperature uh, paste. But uh, once the reflow temperature is reached, it, uh, it really uh, sucks itself in and uh, brings itself together into the pads. I've had good success with this um, 
uh, low temperature solder paste. Okay guys, hey look, using a frying pan made to cook chicken is a far cry from a commercial IR wave soldering machine. You know, toaster ovens can work too, but you know, for around 60 bucks or so, you know, this is a functional tool for the hobbyist to work with those tiny surface mount devices. 73, this is Steve of E6WZ.